Well, historically, the water flowed from north to south, from just south of Orlando, all the way down to Lake Okeechobee, which is a little over 100 miles in distance, uh, across Lake Okeechobee, and to the south, that water would spill over for another 100-mile journey down to the tip of the peninsula into Florida Bay. This journey from north to south is well over 200 miles in length, and this ecosystem from east to west was upwards of 40 to 50 miles uh, in its pre-drainage state. Hamilton Viston, this was a deal with the state of Florida involving land for work uh, covered many millions of acres. Then in 1907, the legislature created the Everglades Drainage District uh, in the early 1900s, uh, proceeded to construct four canals, the West Palm Beach Canal, the North New River Canal, the Miami Canal, and the St. Lucie Canal. All of those were relatively small and had only marginal effect on drainage of the Everglades as a whole. They were very, very shallow and narrow initially as constructed. With the Flood Control Act of 1936, it was one of those uh, post-depression economic recovery ventures. The, the 1947 flood, I believe it was, was the, was the impetus for the creation of the district. For the first time, more water was flowing out of Lake Okeechobee to the east and west through those canals than was continuing to flow south uh, through the Everglades. And then in 1948, Central and Southern Florida Flood Control District was authorized by the legislature in 1954. And that was when Congress authorized the very detailed plan for compartmentalizing the Everglades and building uh, literally dozens of new canals. By about 1958, very dramatic effects of that were being seen uh, very quickly after the levees across the southern end of the agricultural area were built. Uh, the, the through flow from Lake Okeechobee to the Everglades stopped. And uh, at that point, uh, the Everglades really began to collapse as, as a natural entity. Today, South Florida's water flow is highly managed to meet the needs of more than 9 million residents and millions of visitors. Because of this, too little water flows south like it once did and too much precious water is flushed to tide. The lack of freshwater flow has led to an increased frequency and severity of hypersalinity conditions. And that is detrimental to seagrass. It's detrimental to a lot of the plants and animals that live within and around Florida Bay. Further upstream in the river of grass, we've seen uh, increased frequency of soil dry down we've seen an oxidation and a loss of those soils, which leads to a loss of elevation, loss of habitat. A, a lack of freshwater flow to the south has also impacted us. It's impacted our water supply. Uh, the Biscayne Aquifer that is underneath the Everglades is our water supply. If you live in southern Palm Beach County, Broward County, Miami-Dade County, or even the Florida Keys, all the way to Key West, your water supply comes from the recharge of the Biscayne Aquifer that the Everglades provide. A lot of what we did was to make this area livable, and what we're doing a lot of now is still maintaining the flood protection that makes the area livable. We're trying to recover some of the characteristics of the original system, which is this large flowing uh, wet marsh system. So Everglades Restoration is trying to pull that back. Our construction started on multiple things, but it's going to take some time and we're working through them. We've been uh, making lots of progress though. There's a lot of projects that need to be in place before we can restore it. That's the first thing. So it's ta it takes time. And, but what we're doing is basically trying to update uh, our water control plans. So it's a combination of every single project to try to make sure that we 
send more water to where it's needed, which is into Everglades National Park, eventually into the bay. With the stormwater treatment area system, we have large wetlands that cleanse the water of those pollutants that are coming from the lake and coming off those agricultural fields. And that allows us to send the water south. From there, the constraints to sending water south are having uh, mechanisms for distributing that water equally to where you simulate that historic sheet flow pattern. And so restoration by backfilling canals, removing levees, allows us to flow that water so that we can get restoration quantities of flow. Um, from there, in Everglades National Park, from that point, the water flows freely into Florida Bay and the Gulf Coast.